Hey everyone, my name is Josh Powers, and today I'm going to briefly go through how I made this pillowed leather cushion using some of the new features from an upcoming release of Quixel Mixer. Also, as a quick reminder to everyone, Mixer will be free to use during the beta period, which will last about a year or so from now, so make sure you go over to Quixel.com and give the latest release a spin. Okay, as you can see, I went ahead and hid all the layers, um, so that way we can just reveal them as we are going through this mix. And hopefully it'll help you to better understand um, just the stack and hierarchy and how the layers interact with each other and how you can see that we can just build on top of uh, layer after layer to achieve the results that we're going for. Um, so anyways, I start with, usually start with a base uh, layer, fill layer here. It's just kind of a habit of mine. It doesn't really do anything other than the fact that it just offers um, a, a, you know, something to work off of. Um, as you can see that there's, there's no real, there's no controls um, for the base layer. And in this case, uh, my, my first layer that I really want to make, uh, I need to be able to bump up the threshold quite a bit. And I can't do that unless I have a base layer underneath it. So that's why I usually put something like that there. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into the masks. And uh, I'm using, um, I believe I'm using exclusively uh, all the new procedural features from the upcoming release of Mixer. And, um, and I'm going to start with the, the pillow cushion uh, effect. And um, I start with a pattern. And the pattern is just using uh, this tile pattern. And uh, you have a few different options to choose from. Uh, and, and I believe some more are being added. And, uh, and it's just, it's a super powerful way to get some nice procedural results um, using uh, modifiers and, and different um, effects that you can layer on top and multiply and add an overlay and, and to give you different results. Uh, so in this case, um, I have the uh, edge and roundness set pretty low. Edge is just how tight uh, it, it looks, it's, you know, in this case, um, I don't want them to look like tiles. I want them to be more pillowy. So I have that down to zero and round. This is just how tight that, that corner is. So you can go way up to pretty much circles or you can uh, go down to uh, pretty much near perfect square. So I have it a little soft, but not too terribly soft. And so as you can see though, it's, it's kind of hard and, and it, you know, the, the uh, transition here is a little bit abrupt for a pillow. So um, I go ahead and add a modifier on top of that. In this case, it's a blur effect. And uh, as you can see, it's, it really softens that transition out and makes it start to give it that uh, more pillow look. Uh, above that is going to be my seams. And as you can see, it, it doesn't really look like a uh, uh, fabric seam or anything like that. Um, and I, that's because I'm using the same uh, pattern. I'm using a tile pattern. And in, in this case, um, if you get hit nine, you can go to mask mode, or you can also go up here and um, you can look at uh, mask in the different, uh, uh, different view settings. In this case, I want to go to mask for now. And uh, you can either preview the whole thing by clicking here, and that's just kind of like the combined mask of all these different layers here. Or you can click on the specific layer in the uh, mask stack, and then you see just that. Uh, particular mask and in this case you can see that it's you know got really nice harsh um, crisscrossing um, lines and that's exactly what I want um, and so I, I have the edge down here pretty tight um, and then that way it's going to to be a little bit sharper so if I go back to um, if I go back to one or uh, go up here to PBR um, and I then move on to the adjust the next uh, modifier up which is an adjustment layer, and that just kind of tightens tightens this up a little bit. Um, uh, also, you'll notice that there's these arrows here, and this is super handy because these arrows are basically uh, meaning that this uh, modifier is layer linked to this. So anything that I do um, with these modifiers only affects this seam layer, and that way I don't get any issues with the pillows themselves or anything else that I'm doing. It's always just going to be affecting the layer that it's linked to. And you can stack them up as you can see here and they're always all four of these are going to be um, linked to my seams layer uh, which is really really nice uh, so then i add an edge detect and that you know that adds this nice little uh these little details here except that i don't want them bulging out like that i want these to kind of be kicking in a little bit so then i would add another adjustment layer on top of that and i'm going to invert um, those and you can see here uh, i've tagged the invert which lets me um, make that this particular detail kind of bump uh, pushing in rather than bumping out and then it's a little bit harsh so I just add another blur effect on top of that and that just softens that up so then um, I have this pattern here um, which I, I forgot to turn this off but basically uh, I just made a 
um, circle pattern and I tiled it only one time. And if you turn this off, you'll see that, um, and I go back to nine and click here, you'll see that it's, it's just the, the one circle. But then when I add my adjustment, I'm kind of softening that up and then I add a transform. And uh, when I add the transform, uh, you'll see that, that it's, uh, it's multiplied several times and it's going to fit in between each of the cushions. And I did this because I don't want to have the thread uh, or seam, I'm sorry, uh, going over the buttons that I know I'm going to add in a little bit. And so that way I'm just kind of, uh, I'm using this pattern here um, with a multiply. And um, I, in the adjustments, I think I inverted it. Um, and then that way, you see it together. So that, so anything that's black is going to be erased from down below. Uh, and then that way, these seams here uh, just won't be there for me to worry about when I add the buttons. And so that's just, uh, I just kind of did that uh, ahead of time because I knew the buttons are going to be there. And so uh, that kind of takes care of that layer. Um, you can see that we already got something going here, but it's still uh, lacking a lot of detail. So uh, the next thing on the stack is uh, the corner wrinkles. I want to have like some wrinkles kind of coming up uh, where these buttons are going to go to make it look like there's some uh, tautness to the fabric. So I, um, in this case, I just start again with a, I'm going to go back to mask mode so you can see this a little more clearly. I'm starting with just a uh, single sphere, a, a circle anyways, and uh, I have the edge set really low so that it's, uh, so it's going to be um, pretty, pretty easy to work with. And, uh, and be a little bit more flowing uh, instead of like a sharp crink, uh, uh, wrinkle. And then, uh, so I add, the next thing I add is a circular transform. A circular transform is, is essentially, um, it's going to uh, duplicate the, the uh, object or the, the pattern in a circular form. And so um, kind of like a radial array or something like that. And uh, so you can see that it's just kind of squishing this together. So you're already kind of getting a little bit of that star-shaped uh, wrinkle pattern, which is pretty close to what we want already. Um, but then we uh, will duplicate that with a transform, uh, multiply that. So now you can see that it kind of looks pretty ugly right now, but that's what the rest of these modifiers are for. And so we have our blur effect that we add on top of that. And then we add a bevel. Um, and, and this is just a, a bevel and a blur are similar, but they're not quite the same, but um, you can use a bevel to act as a little bit of a blur. And so I took it on top of the blur effect and, and used a bevel and that just kind of drove it even further and kind of softens that up even more. Um, so then, uh, so then I add a noise modifier and this is just to kind of give me a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit more randomness to uh, the wrinkles and not make it look quite so uniform. And I use a blur modifier to just kind of soften that up so that's not quite so strong. Um, and then uh, at the top, we have our um, another pattern that I'm going to use. And this is going to just kind of mask it out from uh, this area here and make it more um, less towards the center and more towards the, um, the corners of the pillows. And then uh, I do an adjustment on top of that. And you can see that uh, now you kind of have that pinching looking uh, corner wrinkle type thing that you would expect. And, um, and all this stuff is non-destructive. So you can go through and, and start to tweak this um, as you, as you see fit, if you wanted more of the wrinkles or, or less, you can adjust that and it's going to um, update all the way up through the stack. So uh, pretty, pretty happy with that. Um, it, it seems a little bit much when you're looking at it through this mode, but it will get softened up a lot with the, um, as I add some of the scan data, and you'll want it to be kind of uh, more pronounced so that it doesn't get lost there. And then I just added a kind of general wrinkle. It's, it's very, very subtle. The opacity is, is knocked down about halfway, um, but this just kind of adds um, a few extra wrinkles along the way. Um, see if we can find a better view. Um, so it's nothing, like I said, it's nothing too much, but it does add a depth of, of realism to the, um, to the, the mix that will, um, you know, just kind of add some little tiny details, uh, that, that sell this as a leather. So then I add a, an actual noise layer, which is right here. Um, and that's just to kind of give me a little bit of variation between the pillows, super subtle again. Um, I could probably even go up a little bit more, 
but uh, you know, it's it's again just the it's the little details that I that I feel like will help sell a texture as believable. <clears throat> and so I didn't want to have everything be super uniform and it is the same pillow height for each of the pillows. I wanted them to be a little bit different. And so I added this and just kept uh, kept everything pretty pretty low. So uh, next I added these button dimples and this is just to kind of make it look like the button that I'm gonna add on top is pushing into the fabric even more. Um, it's pretty simple, it's just a single uh, circle pattern and then I duplicate it four times through transform and then I just add a little bit of a blur for the fall off. Um, so you can kind of see what's going on there. So now it's time to add some uh, scan data. So I just started with a base leather and um, I have no idea what's going on there. That's weird. <laughs> um, I think probably I bumped this down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, when you see little anomalies like that, you know, it's a good chance that your threshold just got adjusted and, and you, there you go. Uh, so the, uh, the base leather, you know, it looks good, but it's, it's very uniform. It's very, um, uh, uninteresting in terms of a, a, a texture as a whole. Um, it just, it looks too clean and pristine, which is great for raw data. You don't want something that has a lot of um, little damage details in it so so that you're not getting a repetitive pattern over your texture. You, but you want to add that into the texture itself so that you don't get the, um, you know, just this kind of pristine, clean look that looks like it's just out of the, the you know, showroom floor. So um, I added a, uh, up here, I'll do this first, I added a worn leather to just kind of give some a uh, little bit more visual interest. You can see a little bit better with the diffuse uh, mode, but it's just kind of giving a little bit of uh, color differentiation between the um, down, you know, the area down here that's going to have a little bit less contact with uh, shirts or whatever, and, and it's going to get uh, rubbed a little less, and, and so it's not going to fade nearly as much. And then I added an aging uh, layer on top of that, and this is actually just a concrete layer, um, and I just... Uh, have the opacity really low on it and um, the radius really high and and that way it kind of gives me this just a little bit of that uh, you know older leather look to it and, and it's really cool to be able to use different scans um, for different things like this like I said it's a concrete and so you wouldn't think that a concrete would work for the leather but you know it does kind of help sell the the age of the leather uh, so I'm gonna go back down here and I'm gonna turn on seam leather and you can see that it it's not too over uh, over the top, but it, it does add a little bit of breakup between the um, the seam and the, the base leather, and I could I could change this color to be you know whatever we wanted. Um, in this case, you know, it's just it's a little bit I think brighter maybe or you know maybe it's even yeah it's a little bit brighter. Um, it just helps make it pop a little bit more, and also it allowed me to change the offset um, so that the leather uh, that the leather uh, crinkles. And, and little details weren't just crossing over. Um, and it allows it to feel like it's its own unique element, uh, which, it, which it is in real life. So you don't want like, you know, this little stripe here, if I didn't do that, it would be crossing right over that and it would continue and all these details would continue and you would see that and notice that the uh, leather seams weren't actually separate from the, the cushion itself. And that's not just, that's not realistic. So uh, that's why that's there. And then, um, for the button height, I just added a fill layer, and the reason I did that is because um, uh, I could then add this leather on top of it, and I could layer link it, and then it's only going to show on the fill layer, which makes it really easy to just quickly uh, mask that out, because I don't have to actually then go through and kind of um, build a mask or, or use painting to mask these in. I just layer link it based on this mask, and, and it's done already for me. In this case, it's just kind of similar to how I did the dimples. It's um, it's just a single um, circle pattern, and then I tile it, and then um, in this case, uh, I have the radius set a little bit lower, I think, than normal, and, um, and it turned out, I think it turned out pretty well. And then lastly, um, I just added a little bit of a damage layer, um, and this is actually, again, this is like a, a flaked concrete wall, and it's actually really um, effective in this case and it starts to make this look like an old leather chair back or something like that and so you can see you know this these nice little uh, details here that just help sell it it's not nothing over the top um, I have my radius set a little bit higher than normal my opacity about halfway um, and wrapped a base set to one um, 
just so that uh, it's it's not affecting any of the pillow uh, norm or height detail below it. Uh, wrap to base will, as you can see, it, it actually con uh, conforms the uh, height data to the height data that's underneath it so that it doesn't affect that, um, which is something I use a, a good deal of the time. Uh, in this case, uh, there might be one where I actually kind of lowered it, but you know didn't fully lower it. And so you can play with that to get different effects, uh, which is really helpful. So um, yeah, that's it. Pretty much in a nutshell, um, you can you know you can tweak with all these things. And and the nice thing is, like I was showing you before, if you wanted to have more of these pillows, uh, you could you know you could easily go down and start adjusting uh, the tiles. And then as long as you adjust the tiles up above it, it's going to uh, you know it's, it's non-destructive. So um, and and I. Do believe that some of the new features that will be implemented uh, will be um, able to link uh, and reference these masks so that you can use it in other layers and then you just have to update the one mask and it'll update all the other masks which is going to be super handy to uh, being able to quickly make adjustments to your um, to things like your tiles and have it update everything um, in real time. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you were able to learn about some of the great new features coming soon to Quixel Mixer. Again, hop over to Quixel.com and be sure to download the free beta. We really look forward to seeing what you create.